Yo, what's up, doll fans? What's up, doll fam? Cause you know we family around here. It's your homie Chris Class, and this is another Miami Dolphins edition of Chilling with Class. And you already know Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team. We take the ball from goal to goal like no one's ever seen. Yeah. Now today I'm gonna say some things that uh you know. Where they asking, should Tua start week one? A lot of people are saying Tua should start week one. I'm going to tell you what Chris Class think. No! 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 Emphatic no's! Alright? Now, while we do have a lot of examples of QBs who have started week one and have had success, you know what I'm saying? The name that keeps coming out I've been seeing is Russell Wilson, and yeah, I like Russell Wilson. He won a Super Bowl, everything like that. It worked out for him. It worked out for him because of the team that he had around him as well. You know, no slight to his ability or anything, but he was in a good position to start. Now, if uh, we remember, Seattle was going to start Matt Flynn who was coming from, uh, you know, a really nice game off uh, in, in Green Bay and got the big contract. And Russell Wilson beat out Matt Flynn. Now, we don't have Matt Flynn or Matt Flynn type. We got Fitzpatrick, veteran QB. He came in last season when we threw Josh Rosen in too early behind that atrocious old line after we traded away Tunsil. Then, and we, Fitzpatrick, led us to some victories at the end of last season. Most notably, the Patriots victory. So, we don't have to start Tua right away. We can let Tua sit back, learn the NFL game, learn our offensive system, Sit and watch Fitzpatrick and learn from a vet quarterback, you know, who's been around. He's he's been a starter, he's been a backup, so he can he can give a wealth of knowledge to Tua if he's you know willing to do that. Because we've had quarterbacks in the past, most notably, you know, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, where you know it's been said that Brett Favre didn't really try to extend his hand and knowledge to, to Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers, hey, he's an example of a quarterback who sat and had success. Now, yeah, he did sit behind the great Brett Favre, but he sat, had success, brought the Packers a Super Bowl. Now, I'm not saying that two is should sit two, three years. You know, one year is enough. Even if he comes in middle of the season, yeah, but week one, nah. Not with the injury, not with, you know, this whole COVID, corona nonsense we got going on. It's not the time right now to throw him into the fire week one. Because ain't no telling how much practices, OTAs, and, and all that, that we'll be able to get in with the full squad. For him to come out week one and be fully prepared and fully ready with the squad. So just sit back, you know, let him rock. Not only that, even if Fitzpatrick isn't doing well, I say throw Rosen in before Tua. So that way, Rosen could build his stock up and we could trade him for a better pick than what might be a seven, six round pick for him right now. We let Rosen, you know, show a little something, build his stock as a backup or potential starter for someone else. And bomb, bomb, there you go. Maybe we get a third for him. Maybe we get a fourth for him. Instead of, you know, cutting him next season or, or something like that. Or trading him for a seventh or, or a sixth after we acquired him for a second with the intents of Rosen being the starter. So let's, you know, let's see how we handle that. And again, the hip injury. You know, we can hear all day that, you know, 
he's been cleared by this doctor, that doctor. But ain't no telling until he step out on that field. And when I want him to step out on that field, I want to, I want him to step out on that field 100%. I would like him to step out on that field where we've had, you know, a normal type of OTAs and training camp and practices. We don't know what's going on right now. So I'd say we got to roll out with the veteran, roll out with Fitzpatrick right now before we start to a week one. Now we have plenty of examples of QBs who started week one and didn't do well. Started week one and did do well. And we also have examples of QBs who didn't start and did well or didn't start right away and didn't do well. It's really all up to who that quarterback is, the pieces you have around in the organization and the coaches. You know, because hey, it doesn't matter if you get drafted number one or number 100. If you suck, you suck. If you great, you great. Simple. That's just how it go. All right. Now, a uh, couple of names that come to mind to me, players who, who didn't uh, start right away. For one, Patrick Mahomes. He didn't start till week 17. He started week 17 of his, uh, of his rookie year and then started the next season. You know, he got to learn under Alex Smith. And then Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes, they style of quarterbacking is completely different. So I'm sure that, you know, watching Alex Smith probably even helped Patrick Mahomes because he's not his style of quarterback. So he was probably able to see that and incorporate that to his style. And Patrick Mahomes won MVP, won Super Bowl. Speaking of another quarterback MVP recently, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, who from down here, who I, who I wish, you know, was able to be a Dolphin, but we ain't got him now. We got to it. Right, but, uh, yeah, Lamar Jackson, he didn't start right away. He came in when Flacco got hurt. Or Flacco wasn't playing well or something, something like that. You know, uh, Carson Palmer had a nice career. He didn't start week one. Aaron Rodgers, I mentioned. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of QBs out there. Brady. I hate to mention his name. But Brady. So two ain't got to start week one. It ain't no guarantee that he's going to be Russell Wilson. You know, it ain't no guarantee he's going to be Peyton. I hope, I hope so. I hope he is, he is great as them. But with the climate that we got, with the whole sickness BS, and, you know, we got to get the chemistry right. So let them sit. Let them chill. And then we'll see what happens. Let Fitzpatrick do his thing. Let Rosen build his stock up. To see if we can use him as trade bait. Or if he's just going to be, you know, our long-term backup behind Tua. We got to find we gotta find this stuff out. You know, because if we get a long-term backup behind Tua, then we don't have to draft another, you know, backup quarterback in the fifth, sixth round. Like, we just drafted a long snapper in the sixth round. I'm still kind of kind of a little upset about that because we let a, a whole lot of talent go in the draft that I thought that we could have had that still got the same long snapper, you know what I'm saying, as an undrafted free agent. But I'm glad he's a Dolphin. I'm, I'm very glad he's a Dolphin. Now, Tua. Back to Tua. No. Do not start him right away. Do not start him right away. Let him learn. Let him completely rehab the injury. Let him get his reps in practice. Give him some first team reps in practice. So that way he gets familiar with the first team. But start right away? No. Because even if he started right away as a rookie, do we think that we're going to the Super Bowl this year? Realistically, no. As a fan... Hell yeah, we going to the Super Bowl every damn year. But realistically, we're not going to the Super Bowl this year. We still got pieces missing. We still need our team to gel. So it don't make no sense to just throw them out there like that. You know, can we make the playoffs this year? Hell yeah. Man, I think we can go 11 and 5, 12 and 4 this year. But that's with Fitzpatrick at quarterback. With two at quarterback, 
I can't see an 11 and 5, 12 and 4 type season, 10 and 6 type season. I, I don't see it. Not with a, you know, not with a rookie quarterback coming off a hip injury. Ain't no telling what his mental going to be like coming off an injury. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't come back from injury well just based on their mindset and because they're constantly thinking about the injury. So I think we got to take this with precaution. Take it slow. It's all right if, you know, if we sit them this year and bring them on through next year. Bring them on through next year. We've got more draft picks, more added pieces coming up with the cap. And then next year, we can hit the ground running and be talking Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? 2021. We, 2020, I hope we in the playoffs. 2021, deep in the playoffs. And 2022, that Super Bowl. I've been I, I've been saying 2022 Super Bowl since 2019 with, with a couple, you know, personal friends of mine. So yeah, let's go. Sit to her, and we'll get the Super Bowl in 2022. This is Chris Class. Thank you for chilling. Shout out to the doll fans. Shout out to my doll fam. You already know what it is. Peace and love. Yeah.